Hi everyone, I'm Deepak. I'm a final year PhD student at Stanford University, advised by Mate Zaharia. And I'm excited today to talk about PipeDream, a new way to parallelize DNN model training. This is joint work with a number of awesome folks at Microsoft Research and Carnegie Mellon University. Deep neural networks have empowered state-of-the-art results across a broad range of applications, such as image classification, machine translation, game playing, and speech to text. However, model needs to be, models need to be trained before they can be deployed. Training a DNN model at a high level involves finding weight parameters W that fit a training data set, consisting of inputs and their corresponding labels. A forward pass through the model then generates intermediate activations and a prediction. This prediction might be incorrect, for example, the model might initially think this picture of a lion of a tiger is in fact a lion. Errors between the predictions and the true labels are back propagated back through the model in a backward pass, generating weight gradients that are used to update the model. Training models requires many passes through the input data set, making this entire process extremely time and compute intensive. In order to obtain train models in reasonable timeframes, people have resorted to distributing the training of a model. The common approach to, to, to perform distributed training is an approach called data parallelism, where a model is replicated across the available workers, inputs are sharded and weight updates are generated and weight updates are first computed independently and then aggregated using collective communication primitives such as all reduce. However, this periodic communication can get expensive extremely quickly. As we observed empirically using multi GPU servers available on Amazon EC2 and the PyTorch training framework. Here in this graph, I'm showing communication overhead as the percentage of total time on the y-axis and the number of GPUs used in training on the x-axis. We observed that as much as 80% of total training time is spent on, on communication. Model parallelism is an alternative approach to distributing model training, where a single version of the weights is split over multiple workers. Communication between workers is now limited to intermediate activations and gradients, which can be sent using peer-to-peer -peer communication primitives, such as send and receive. This drastically reduces the amount of communication that's happening between workers. However, model parallelism, as I've described it on the previous slide, where layers are partitioned over multiple workers, can lead to poor resource utilization. In this timeline diagram, we show per worker utilization on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Numbers indicate input IDs of inputs flowing through the model. And we see that at any point in time, at most one worker is active, limiting throughput. One way of solving this problem is to use pipelining. In other words, by passing multiple, by injecting multiple inputs into the system, we can ensure that in steady state, every worker has a different input to process, thus improving utilization and consequently throughput. Even though pipelining is a common performance optimization used in computer systems, pipelining in DNN training is challenging for two main reasons. First, backward pass operators are stateful and depend both on the weight parameters and the intermediate activations computed during the corresponding forward pass. In particular, for clean weight update semantics, the backward pass for a particular input needs to use the same weight version and intermediate activation that was used in the forward pass. In other words, naive pipelining can lead to a mismatch in weight versions. Let's look at an example. Consider some input N that uses a weight version W sub N to produce the, an output activation Y sub N in a forward pass. Now, if we were to use the latest version for every input, 
And we updated wait versions whenever a backward pass completed. We would see that before we're ready to perform the backward pass for input n, the wait, the latest wait version has progressed some new, to some new wait version, w sub n plus b. We observed that now input n sees updates in the backward pass that it didn't see in the forward pass, leading to incorrect gradient computations. To resolve this problem, we can store multiple weight and activation versions to ensure that the same weight version is used in, the bo in both the forward and backward passes for any particular input. In the example from the previous slide, when we're ready to perform the backward pass for input n, we can use the same weight version w sub n that we used in n's forward pass. I want to note here that even though we're storing more versions of the state, since a single model is sharded across multiple workers, in this particular case, D workers, we see that the total worst case memory footprint is actually similar to data parallelism, since each version of the state is D times smaller as well. The second challenge that we need to deal with when trying to perform pipelining with DNN training is determining how DNN operators should be partitioned into pipeline stages. This is difficult since each operator has a different computation time and the intermediate activations and gradients that need to be communicated across different stages also have different sizes. In other words, the key challenge here is deciding how operators in a deep neural network model should be partitioned into pipeline stages. Let's consider an example where we have a model with 12 operators and we need to partition it into three stages. If each of these stages take times T1, T2, and T3, then the first desired property is that T1, T2, and T3 are as close to each other as possible. This ensures that compute resources are seldom idle, ensuring better hardware efficiency of the pipeline. In addition, we see that we need to perform some communication between each stage. And we want to ensure that this communication time is also as small as possible, thus improving the hardware efficiency of the pipeline. And I encourage you to see our SOSP paper for details on how Pipe Dreams Optimizer makes these decisions in practice. Now let's look at some empirical results. To evaluate how well Pipe Dreams ideas do, we integrated it with PyTorch in about 3000 lines of code. We use PyTorch's communication library for communication of various tensors between workers. And we ran experiments on three different server types, two in the public cloud on Amazon and Azure, and the third on a private cluster with a slightly older generation of GPU. The main thing we wanna show in our evaluation is that Pipedream is able to train models much faster than existing approaches. In this graph, I'm gonna show top one accuracy on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. The goal is to train a high accuracy model as fast as possible. So up and to the left is better. We observed that Pipedream is able to train a VGG16 image classification model as much as 5.3x faster than data parallelism. And this is because Pipedream is able to be more strategic about the tensors it sends between workers while still ensuring that compute resources are well utilized. We ran experiments on a number of other tasks as well. So we ran experiments on image classification, translation, language modeling, and video captioning tasks. And we found that using the same number of GPUs, Pipedream is up to 5.3x faster than data parallelism on the time to accuracy metric. So some takeaways from building Pipedream. We observed that model and data parallelism are useful primitives to parallelize deep learning training, 
but they can often suffer from high communication overhead and low resource utilization for certain models and deployments. Pipedream shows that pipelining can be used to accelerate distribute training for models that fit on a single worker. And that pipelining, when combined with data and model parallelism in a principal way, can achieve end-to-end -end training speedups of up to 5.3x compared to data parallelism with a similar worst case memory footprint. And this work appeared at SOSP 2019. While this is all fine and good, we have observed that modern deep neural networks are in fact becoming much larger. This is a graph from the recent GPT-3 paper, which shows training accuracy as the blue score on the y-axis and the number of parameters in the language model on the x-axis. As we can see, translation performance improves as the size of the model increases. And the largest model shown in this graph actually has 175 billion parameters, which is 700 gigabytes in 32-bit precision. The natural question to ask is, one does, how does one actually go about training a 700 gigabyte model? We are not the only ones to consider how pipeline parallelism should work for training large models. Gpipe is another system from Google that uses pipeline parallelism to train large models that do not fit on a single worker. Gpipe makes slightly different trade-offs, uh, makes slightly different design decisions when considering how to ensure that the same weight version is used in both the forward and backward pass. In particular, Gpipe only uses a single weight version but introduces periodic pipeline flushes into the pipeline to ensure that all workers use the exact same weight version. Thus, if you were to compare Gpipe and Pipedream, we observe that they make different trade-offs between throughput and memory footprint. Gpipe's periodic pipeline flushes help it reduce memory footprint, but this comes at the cost of throughput. Pipedream does not have any such periodic flush events, so it has high throughput, but it also has higher memory footprint from having to maintain D versions, where D is the depth of the pipeline. And so in some follow-up work to Pipedream, we try to answer the question of whether we can actually achieve the best of both worlds, high throughput and low memory footprint. And we accomplished this using a technique called double buffered weight updates, with double buffered weight updates, instead of the number of weight versions being linear in the depth of the pipeline, we only have to maintain two weight versions, a shadow version and a main version. And this ensures that Pipedream can still train large models that do not fit on a single worker. The main, up, the main insight from 2BW is that weight updates do not need to be applied as soon as they are generated. Instead, weight updates can be aggregated into single larger weight updates. And this helps to limit the total number of weight versions that we need to maintain. I, yeah. For example, here, we see that weight updates from inputs one to four are accumulated and applied as a single weight update to generate a new weight version, W sub i superscript four. We also observed that the newest weight version cannot be immediately used. Since we wanna make sure that a particular input uses the same weight version in both the forward and backward passes. For example, input five uses weight version W sub i superscript zero throughout and does not use the new weight version W sub i superscript four since the forward pass from input five occurs on some workers before this new weight version is generated. 
We also use activation recomputation to limit the memory footprint of intermediate activations. The weight semantics of the resulting weight updates are slightly different from G pipes. Assuming a per GPU microbatch size of small b, we observe that since we aggregate d microbatches at a time and apply the gradient average over these d microbatches, the effective mini batch size is small b times d, where d is the depth of the pipeline. While vanilla data parallelism has a weight update equation that looks like w sub t plus, w superscript t plus one equal to wt minus the learning rate times some gradient weight gradient computed with this latest weight version, we observe that 2bw has almost unchanged semantics. Instead of the only real difference is that instead of using a weight gradient computed using the latest weight version, we use a weight gradient computed using a one stale um, weight version. And we also observe that the semantics are similar if we use data parallelism when replicating stages, or if we do further gradient accumulation within the pipeline. The only difference in these settings is that the mini batch size B is multiplied by an appropriate scale factor. We ran experiments for pipe dream 2BW, comparing it against baselines on P316X large instances on Amazon AWS. Our main baselines are hybrid parallelism, which does not use pipelining, vanilla pipe dream, and Gpipe. Since we're interested in evaluating pipe dream 2BW in a setting where models do not fit on a single worker, data parallelism is actually not an applicable baseline for these large models. And we evaluated performance on BERT models with various number of transformer layers, as well as a GPT-2 model with 760 million parameters. The first result we wanna show is that 2BW has weight update semantics similar to data parallelism. We pre-trained a BERT-24 model with and without 2BW using the same set of hyperparameters. We observed that the two training loss trajectories are virtually identical after the first couple of epochs. We also took the resulting pre-trained BERT24 models and fine-tuned them on two downstream glue tasks. And we observed similar accuracies across three fine-tuning trials. With fine-tuning as well, we used the same hyperparameters for both setups. We also observed that pipe dream 2BW is faster than baselines. Here in these graphs, we show the throughput in sequences per second for pipe dream 2BW shown in red, as well as the various baselines we discussed a couple of slides ago. We observed that on the basis of throughput, Pipe dream 2BW is up to 6.9x faster than approaches that do not use pipelining. Pipe dream 2BW is also up to 1.9x faster than Gpipe since it in, does not introduce periodic pipeline flushes, which limit throughput. Pipe dream 2BW also has low memory footprint. In this bar graph, I'm showing the memory footprint for various systems using a fixed per GPU microbatch size of four across system configurations. We observed that across different models, pipe dream 2BW with activation recomputation has similar memory footprint to model parallelism, which is a, represents a best case scenario from a memory footprint perspective. We want to note that even though pipe dream 2BW has similar memory footprint to model parallelism, it is able to train models up to 6.9 X faster. That's our main takeaways from designing and building 2BW was that model parallelism can be used to train large models that do not fit on a single worker as well. However, model parallelism can suffer from low resource utilization. Pipe Dream 2BW carefully manages weight versions and uses activation recomputation when necessary to limit memory footprint and can accelerate training by up to 6.9x compared to optimized baselines that do not use pipelining 
and up to 1.9x compared to approaches like G pipe, which do use pipelining. A preprint of this work is available on archive. In conclusion, we've shown that pipeline parallelism can accelerate distributed training, both in regimes where model metadata, that is the weight parameters and intermediate activations can fit on a single worker and also in settings where they do not. Pipedream's code is open source on GitHub at that URL. And with that, I'm happy to take questions. Thanks for listening.